service at the comfort of your home from the Morning Cloud TV Global Studios. This is Church in the House. Experience God's outbreak wherever you are. Sit, relax, and participate. He began ministry as a local prayer and church intercession team leader and later grew up to become an evangelist participating actively in rural crusade evangelism from the year 1993. He later became a local church pastor in the year 1996 and was commissioned into independent ministry by the year 2000. Since then, he has served in many different capacities in God's kingdom. He is a husband, father, author of many spiritual reformatory books, a teacher of God's word, God's kingdom media personality, a resident pastor and spiritual authority to many warriors of righteousness that are across the nations. Apostle Richard Takim is currently serving as an apostolic leader of the Cry of the Spirit Ministries Global from its operational base stationed in Nairobi, Kenya. Foundly known as Apostle by Content, he is currently the overseer of the Morning Cloud TV. Bad things are still going to happen, but we shall experience greatest lifting in the midst of crisis by tapping into profession from unexpected ends. It's a very special book brought to us titled provisions from unexpected aids it's a book that will strengthen you to run against the troops and leap over the walls it is what you know that determines how you run the righteous are redeemed by knowledge if you are only praying without knowledge you will be knocked down in the day of temptation because your spirit ain't fortified with knowledge Provisions from Unexpected Ends is an amazing book. When you sit with this book, Provisions from Unexpected Ends, you are actually schooling in the spirit. And now, we introduce to you the latest book from God's Kingdom Scribe, a spiritual father, Apostle Richard E. S. Takem. This book will show you how to tap into the very word of God and pull down the needed peace, joy, abundance, and the very provision we need in the midst of a crisis. Get your copy today. Keeper of his covenant. You sent this scroll. to deliver people from the false grace movement. You said to me that I should dig the well of revival. I pray, oh God, that you be my witness so I can be your witness. Whoever will read this will catch the revival fire. Amen. Will be delivered from the false grace movement. Amen. Apostolic Parental Advisory. Advisory. Any preacher who is not eternity conscious cannot form Christ in people. Any church that does not purify you will desecrate you. You don't need prayers, deliverance services, and prophets prophesying to you, prayer partners, or prayer points. You need sound doctrine. If you keep the Bible aside, you have simply stepped aside. How do you know that you have departed from the faith when you can no longer stand sound doctrine? When you treat sins with kids' gloves? When you start thinking that deliverance prayers will be the answer to your problems? When you want to do the work of God without doing His word? If a message that warns you about hell evokes resentment in your heart against the preacher? Whenever this happens, disconnect from everything and stay connected to the Morning Cloud TV and let Jesus minister to you.
cry of the spirit online radio invading darkness with the voice of the lord the hearts of many in our age are so filled with gross darkness many can no longer tell the difference between light and darkness yes yes the stage is set for jesus to be revealed jesus to be revealed the stage is set for Jesus to show himself and let us know through the demonstration of his power and glory the difference between light and darkness. The greatest need of your life is not marriage, money, freedom from generational curses or evil altars, but the fullness of God resting over your life and making things happen. If you wish to wear a crown, you must first carry a cross. It is possible with the Morning Cloud Television. Keeper of his covenant. You sent this scroll to deliver people from the false grace movement. You said to me that I should dig the well of revival. I pray, oh God, that you be my witness so I can be your witness. Revival fire Amen. will be delivered from the false grace movement. Welcome to another week, another season of uh, our August edition of a Prophetic Apostolic Training School. My name is Richard E. S. Takim. We are reaching you from the Cry of the Spirit uh, Ministries located in Nairobi, Kenya. And um, this is um, one of those uh, main trusts of our ministry uh, because we are executing a sanctification mandate first to believers than to non-believers. The prophetic and apostolic anointing is basically to minister to the saints, to edify the body of Christ. Then, then those who have been edified cannot be propelled to reach the lost world. We also reach the lost world. So um, that is why the content of whatever we share is first of all appreciated by those who have met the Lord, not those who are in, in religion, um, except God do a major miracle in their mind and they remain persistently, then they cannot start appreciating whatever is being said. Like, so, so we've been having these schools every month. The one of August is long and is special. Today is the 13th day. Um, it's been, why is 13th day? Because weekends are basically for the in-house uh, edition of the school. Then certain Fridays have been used for uh, other programs, which are also part of uh, the mantle. So, but um, the school itself that runs on television has been for 13 days. And in case you are joining us for the first time, you've missed 12 editions. But I want to encourage you to go to our YouTube channel, 
present truth for present times to pick those uh, editions. Just watch them so that you catch up. That will be not now, that is, that is after. But for today, just participate because we are beginning a fresh um, season today. It's been a school of miracles, signs and wonders. So we've seen miracles, we've seen signs. Uh, but there are certain teachings about signs I couldn't bring. There are certain, certain signs in scriptures, things like signs of a divine call, signs of, uh, of the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Uh, those are signs that we have to walk in. Then signs of what is God's will and what is not God's will. And uh, then signs of uh, appointed time. Then we also have the apostolic signs. So we, we have all those signs which, if we are to dwell on signs alone, maybe we'll keep talking until <laughs> maybe we get to the end of the year. So, but the few we have learned, I just picked uh, four basic. The signs of Moses, then the signs of the Messiah, sorry, three, the signs of Moses, signs of Messiah, and the signs of the believer. Those are the three that we've seen. And, but there are others, like I've mentioned, and uh, even signs of uh, who is your spouse, marital signs. Uh, uh, maybe in the days to come we'll share those ones. What are the signs that the Spirit of God will always drop in your spirit that this is your wife or this is your husband? Those are signs that believers need to walk in. So we also there are signs that comes in form of dream language. They come in form of dream language. They come in form of visionary state. So, so those signs, we didn't go into them. So talking about signs, is a whole lot, is a whole lot. It is almost inexhaustible because signs are more of the manifestations that happen in God's kingdom than other things. Sometimes there could not be a miracle, but there will be a sign. And um, even like I remember somebody um, sending me a message that tuning to the morning cloud to her as of when she tuned was a sign. Uh, so, so any, any, uh, we, we, we classify those ones, miscellaneous signs, signs that you cannot put in categories, miscellaneous. God could use anything as a sign to you. He could speak to you in anything as a sign. You could, you could be traveling and uh, a sign will just come if the journey will be good or the journey will be bad. So we have all kinds of signs. We also have natural signs that are attached to our bodies. Uh, so, so. Those are when it comes to science, uh, we have a whole lot, a lot of it. In the medical field, they call it symptoms. You know, a sign is a pointer of a big reality. Remember, with those are the things we see. Signs are always pointers of something bigger. That is that signs are common in God's kingdom. Yes. So this week we want to look at wonders, and uh, we are beginning today on this uh, set of truth on. Um, matters of wonders. I've come to realize that if we don't understand the language of science, we'll miss our visitation, we'll miss our blessings, we'll miss things that have to do with our destiny. Majority of things that have to do with our destiny, they come in format that we don't like in terms of um, likeness, sent sentiment. Uh, you will not be sentimentally attached, but you could be spiritually attached to it. The later sentiments could develop, but, but sometimes you don't like, but you know this is what you need. Uh, this, your, if you have the Holy Spirit in you, you know this, the Spirit of God within you will let you understand that this is what you need. So it is the Holy Spirit within us that actually helps us to understand the language of science. So if you don't have the Holy Spirit within you, you can never walk in science. You can never understand the language of science. So, but... There are certain signs that through teaching you understand. Like the signs of Messiah, the signs of Moses, the signs of a believer. Through teaching you understand those signs. But there are certain signs that you don't, you don't need teaching to understand. There are no signs that you need a teaching to understand. There are signs that you need the teacher himself, which is the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, living in you. Like I said, there are signs that you need teachings to understand their language. There are signs that you need the teacher to understand the language. So if you are face to face with a sign that needs teaching and there's no teachings, you, you'll be lost. The sign will never fulfill its intention. 
Let's say it's a sign to save you from death. You will just die premature. Or a sign to save you from taking a bad decision. You will take the bad decision and, and it's going to destroy you. So, because there's no teaching. You may have the teacher within you. There are certain truths in God's kingdom that God delegates to apostles and prophets to teach. Pastors will never know them. Evangelists will never know them. Uh, teachers, will ne teachers themselves will never even know. You get my point? But that, that's why if you meet any teacher in God's kingdom, they, they don't teach deep truths. They, they teach things like on the school level. They teach, but they don't teach deep truth. When you meet somebody who teaches deep truth, you have met somebody who has the apostolic mantle. Because it is the apostles and, and prophets that are called of God to unearth the deep things of God and bring them out to us. And the, the essence of the deep things of God is to take off lawlessness. Because when you have the deep things of God, you will not operate in lawlessness. So when you are in shallow waters, you are in a realm of I don't care, a realm of ignorance. So you do certain things. In fact, you will be controlled by what is good to you. When, if you are in the shallow waters, you will be controlled by what is good to you. And it's very dangerous to be controlled by what is good to you. Eve was controlled by what was good to her. And look at where we are today. She lost the garden. What was that was good to her? The fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. That was what the devil said to him. He said, don't mind God. God knows that the day you eat this thing, you will be like him. She forgot that they were already like, like God. You will be like him, knowing good and evil. Now, Satan spoke the truth there, but mixed up with a lie. And that pattern has not changed, even to the preachers. That was what I say, when you see a preacher who preach a word and mix with a, a crazy lie, don't listen to that preacher again. For your own good. Because that is a sign of the spirit that rules the person's heart. So, so, so the devil actually, it is true that when they eat of the tree, they will, be under, they will understand the difference between good and bad. That is why God planted that tree in the garden. So that in the day of judgment of Lucifer, Adam can eat it and execute proper judgment. But the part that was a lie is that they will be like God. They were already like God. So the characteristics of, of heresy is what you see in Genesis chapter 3 there. The characteristic of deception. Why do people fall into deception? Because deception comes with elements of truth. It comes with elements of fact. So because it comes with facts, you fall into it. That is what the Bible says. Even the elect will be deceived. Possible, possibly. It didn't say they will be deceived. It just say, if possible. What means the devil will attempt to deceive the, the, the elect. He will not even spare them. So you don't make decisions based on what is good to you. It's the spirit of lawlessness that make us to make decisions based on what is good to us. We make decisions based on what is the will of God for us. It may not be good to us from our, based on our judgment, but, but at the long run, God will understand the hearts of men. Who knows the future in the present? Know that whatever he has chosen for you is good for you. Now, this is where the deep things of God comes in. Because it takes encounter with the deep things of God to come to the realm where the spirit of lawlessness will not rule your life again. So, God positioned apostles and prophets. That's what the Bible says. First apostles, then prophets, the order of God in the church. So that they can unearth things for people, for the pastors, evangelists, and teachers to take and run with it. So that we can all perfect the sense for the work of the ministry. It is proud evangelists that call themselves apostles. Proud pastors call themselves apostles. Proud teachers call themselves apostles. But by the time you sit on that and you have tested the apostolic doctrine, you will know these people who are calling themselves apostles, they are apostles by content. Sorry, apostles by title. So they are apostates. They are apostates. I've come across a lot of apostles by titles that they don't even have anything. Like, like I said over and over, no apostle of Jesus Christ is going to talk about altar. No, because the original apostles, the 12, never spoke about altar. So we are a continuation of their ministries. Every apostle, every we ascension apostle, because we have three kinds of apostles. We have original apostles, that is the 12 apostles of the Lamb, who, are, who have the foundation, who have their foundation in the New Jerusalem. They, they lay the foundation for the faith. Now, they didn't speak about evil water. They didn't talk about redemption of first one. They didn't talk about uh, baiting people with oil or using oil as a symbol of the Holy Spirit. They didn't even talk about it. Somebody will say, James. James never said so, even. 
So if you, that's why you see they were different. So that's why I said any apostle today who is talking about altar in any sense, maybe breaking, raising, or silencing, except he's speaking about altar as a symbol of a life that is sacrificed unto God, uh -huh. or a heart that is yielded to God. Uh -huh. But when they're talking about altar in the format of how to, how to raise godly altar to deal with evil altars, the battle of altars, altar against altar, and they say they are apostles. They're not apostles, they are apostates. They are apostates because the apostles of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, never preached that. And we, like I said, there are three kinds of apostles. We have original apostles, the twelve. Then we have ascension apostles, people like Paul. He was not among the original twelve. The Bible scholar believed that he's the right replacement for Judas. He was not among the original twelve. People like Paul, they are, called, they are ascension apostles. So everyone with apostolic mantle, after the, apart from the 12 original apostles, they are called ascension apostles. So today, was, was in every generation, God will raise ascension apostles because there's always the spirit of lawlessness to dismantle. No evangelist can dismantle the spirit of lawlessness. You can see that in the book of Acts we're going to see today. No pastor can dismantle the spirit of lawlessness. No teacher can dismantle the, the spirit of lawlessness. That's why God warned the three of them to position themselves under apostolic and prophetic mantles so that they can be able to receive the ingredients to pattern their ministries in such a way that the spirit of lawlessness will not, will not find a resting place there. So you must understand these things, that, that the deep things of God are actually what help us to silence the spirit of lawlessness. So signs are very, very major language in the spirit that God helping us. If you don't have the teachings, you will not understand certain signs. If you don't have the teacher, you will not understand other signs. Then I tell us there are two uh, format of interpreting signs. One, you interpret signs according to the teachings you have, you have been taught. The teachings in scriptures, like the signs of Messiah, can, they have been taught in scriptures. The signs of Moses cannot be understood until you are taught by an apostle, by content. Someone with an apostolic mantle and prophetic anointing, they have to teach you the signs of Moses. Two, the signs of Messiah must be taught. The signs of a believer must be taught. Apostolic signs must be taught. The signs of, of um, what the will of God is, you must be taught. You also need the teacher for that one. The signs of how to identify who to marry, you need both the teacher and teachings. So there are certain signs that you need both, teacher and teachings, but there are signs of, maybe you are working on the way, miscellaneous signs. What is the, Father, is it your will that I should go for this journey? And God will send a sign. That one, you need the teacher. You don't need teachings. You need the teacher himself, the spirit of God in you, helping you to understand that this is it and this is it. So, science, actually, we have a whole lot of beautiful stuff about science. And uh, maybe in the days to come, we could revisit that again. We'll look at other science that we couldn't teach in this very edition of the school. Because I want to go straight to the third word in that family, wonders. We are, in that family, we have science, number, sorry, miracles, number one, science, number two, wonders, number three. So today, we want to begin with God's wonders today. How to walk in God's wonders. How to walk in God's wonders. It's what we'll be looking at today. And uh, I pray that the Holy Spirit will speak to our hearts in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for the mercy you have given us to be called children of God. You shed your blood on the cross. You died and you declared that the enmity between us and you is taken away. And you said, you are what blessed is he whom you caused to approach you. Cause us to approach you again tonight. Pull us with your word, with your spirit. Teach us. Take away veils from our hearts. Bring us to the place 
of being highly inflammable in your spirit in this perverse and wicked generation. Pull down the structures of darkness from our lives, from the root uprooted in the name of Jesus. I pray, O oh God, that your presence permeate every home right now. Your presence permeate every home. Your presence permeate every heart. Your presence permeate every home in the name of Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Now, let me begin with what I will consider as our a text, maybe for today alone. I, I use this text in writing uh, this, this uh, where is the book? In writing this book. The book uh, Overcoming Witchcraft. That is the text I use. Overcoming witchcraft by the greatness of God's power. The greatness. You don't overcome witchcraft by pouring oil, pouring salt, um, carrying water and sprinkling. You are also practicing witchcraft. Actually, you don't use charismatic witchcraft to deal with black witchcraft. People who use water, salt, oil to deal with witchcraft issues are actually using charismatic witchcraft to deal with black witchcraft. And Jesus said, Satan cannot cast out Satan. That's how you see there have been no solution to people's problems. We wrote this book to show people the apostolic way, <laughs> which is in the Bible, the Christ way of dismantling witchcraft. That's why we say overcoming witchcraft by the greatness of God's power. So not by pouring oil, pouring water, pouring salt, and, uh, and all of that stuff. You see, this, one of the smallest forces to deal with in the terrestrial plane is witchcraft. If you, if you understand the secrets in this book, you'll be able to dismantle it simply, simply. You don't need to go and engage any this thing. So, the, the, I, the, that is the scripture I want to write now. The scripture that I stood on to write this book. Psalm 66, verse Three, it says, say to God, how awesome are your works. You see his wonders. Say to God, how awesome are your works. Through the greatness of your power, your enemies shall submit themselves to you. So most wonders are product of the manifestation of the great power of God. When the power of God is made manifest, in its greatness, it produced wonders. And those wonders could come in the format of miracles or signs. But they produce wonders. The issue is that every miracle produces a wonder. Every most signs produce wonders. Okay, let me use the word most. Most miracles produce wonders. Most signs produce wonders. So, but there can also be a wonder. Whenever the power of God manifests in, in a great way, whenever the power of God manifests in his greatness, then we see a wonder. So that's why we're looking at the wonders of God because there are different wonders. But we want to learn how to walk in God's own wonders, in the wonders of God. That's what I want to look at. So, how to walk in them, how to, which means it will involve, it will involve the greatness of God's power to walk in wonders. I think that should be the first thing to write. You, you must have the greatness of his power in your life to walk in his wonders. You must have the greatness of his power. That is why Acts chapter 1 verse 8 is very important. We shall receive power when the Holy Ghost come upon you. You shall be witness unto me. Nobody can be a successful witness for God if he is not walking in wonders. Nobody can be a successful Christian if you are not walking in wonders. So you must understand, you must have the great power of God in your life. You must have the Holy Spirit. That's what I'm trying to say. 
You must be born of the Spirit. You must not operate in the flesh. You must operate in the Spirit to be able to walk in the wonders of God. But not everybody who experienced God's wonders, look at what we're, we're not talking about to be able to experience the wonders. We are saying to walk. You can experience God's wonders without being born again. You can experience God's wonders without having the Holy Spirit. That is when God now is beckoning on you to come to him. But we're talking about how to walk in it. How to walk in it. So let me just quickly list things you will need to walk in God's wonders before we start unfolding certain things. You need God's power in your life. You need to walk in the spirit. You need to walk in the spirit. Not the flesh. And you need to walk in understanding. You need to walk in understanding of what the wonders of God are. You need to walk in God's power. You need to walk, walk in God's power. You need to walk in the spirit of God, not in the flesh. And you need to walk in understanding. Now, all these things will require the Bible, <laughs> will require a whole lot of stuff because we require faith, a whole lot of stuff. To walk in, in wonders, you need God's power in your life. Psalm 66 says, how great, look at that word again, verse 3, how awesome are your works through the greatness of your power, your enemies shall submit themselves to you. So when the enemies submit themselves, it's a wonder. That alone is a wonder. It is the greatness of God's power in manifestation that produce wonders. So the Bible now says in verse 4, all the earth shall worship you and sing praise to you. They shall sing praise to your name, Selah. The, the ultimate purpose of God's wonders is to promote the worship, promote his worship on earth. Is to make men worship him. That is the purpose of God's wonders, is to promote the worship of the one and only true God on the face of the earth. That now tells us that when you are walking in wonders, you begin to influence hearts around you. To worship God. You'll be influencing hearts around you to worship the one and only true God. Because the primary purpose of God's wonders is to generate the worship of the one and only true God. And that is very, very important. Maybe I need to write it here. The primary purpose of God's wonders is to, let me just say, raise worshipers or promote the worship of the one and only true God. That is the essence of God's wonders. Promote. Promote the worship of the one and only true God. That is the ultimate purpose of God's wonders. How to walk in the wonders of God. That is the ultimate purpose of the wonders of God. It is to promote the worship of the one and only true God. Look at what Jesus said in John chapter 17. He said, this is eternal life. That they may know you, the only true God. And Jesus Christ whom you have sent. So the manifestation of the wonders of God is to make men know him as the only true God and Jesus Christ whom we have sent. There was a testimony which maybe I've shared on this before, maybe during lockdown. I don't I think I remember. I shared this testimony before. I read a story of what happened in a particular village in Afghanistan. And they said 
the only part of Afghanistan that is Christian, that you find Christians, the reason for that is because of what I want to share. So I read that there was a Christian in Afghan who just a little family, I think they, they got their Christianity from outside Afghan and a little settlement. A, I won't call it a village, it's like a hamlet. And those people were practicing Christianity, but the rest of the environment was practicing Islam. And in, and in that period, there were, they were invaders. So they, they were surviving by the sword. So this little hamlet was uh, targeted to be invaded and destroyed completely. So the leader of the invasion sent a message to the head of the hamlet and said, we are coming so so day. And if you people don't drop this uh, infidel something that you call Christianity, we are going to kill all of you. The only thing that will make me to believe you people that you are serving God. Didn't your, didn't your Bible say, if you can say to this mountain, be uprooted and be cast into the sea, that is going to happen. So we are going to come and we are going to show you a mountain. If you don't pray that that mountain be uprooted and cast into the sea, we will kill all of you. But if you pray, we are going to repent and start serving your Jesus. So when they said so, then this hamlet sent a message to a believer somewhere, maybe outside of Ghana or so, who is very serious with God. It wasn't a pastor. Let me tell you how serious he was with God. Because there was nobody to explain the Bible to him. He was just reading the Bible literally. So if he stumbled into a place in the Bible where Jesus spoke about hell, and Jesus said, and, and the guy was a shoemaker. So Jesus said in that place, if your hand will cause you to go to hell, cut it off. It's better you go to hell without a hand than to enter hell. Sorry, it's better to go to heaven without a hand than to go to hell with two hands. And that referred to relationship. If there's the a relationship in your life that will cause you to go to hell, the Bible says you should cut it off. That it's better to go to heaven maim without that relationship than to lose than to have the relationship and, and go to hell. So, the Bible also spoke about the eye. If your eye will cause you to go to hell, plug it off. It's also talking about discipline, what we see. Most people have becoming, most people have become wrecked in life because of what they see with their eyes. People are hooked up into all kinds of sinful habits because of what they see. So, this man was repairing the shoe of a lady one day. And when he was trying to, he finished repairing, he now asked the lady to test it. So he knelt down, you know, a cobbler, that is a, a shoemaker. He knelt down and he was trying to put the shoe in the lady's leg. So while he was doing so, he, he wanted to, he turned to like, tell the lady, put your leg now. He now saw her unders. Because you're wearing a skirt, he saw her under. So, the man now, at the end of uh, attend to the lady, he now went and said, ah, yeah, I've sinned against God. The Bible says, if your eye will cause you. So he took a knife and actually plucked his eyes and blinded his, himself. And he kept living like that. You see why we need teachers of the world, people to teach us the Bible. The letter kills, but the spirit gives life. But God, in terms of ignorance, because in fact, he did that. God saw his motive. Yes, he never had knowledge. But he did, but God saw his motive. His motive was holiness. His motive was to please God. And I remember teaching about pleasing God some time ago. His motive was to please God. So, so God actually, um, um, I think, that increased his faith, increased uh, an anointing or something in his life. So, that was how serious he was with God. I needed to tell you that. So, he was a one man. One eye man in that in his own village. And people knew him as a serious minded Christian. So these people now sent for him to come and help them. I mean the hamlet. So they said the war the, the war the warrior of the band is coming 
so so day. So the man came and the warrior arrived with all his army armed with swords. The man stood like this and told the people of the hamlet, Now we have come. Your Bible say, if you have faith like a mustard seed, you can ask this mountain to be put and turned to the sea. He said, if you do that, you, have, you don't doubt in your heart, God will give you. So now, you are going to pray and ask that this mountain, the point, you know, Afghanistan is full of rocks. It's full of mountains. So they pointed to one mountain and told, the, and told him, oh yeah, pray, remove this one. Or else, if you can't remove it, then we'll kill all of you. But if you can remove it, we will repent. We will accept your Jesus. So the one eye man was already in the camp. So the people called the one eye man and he came and stood and told the, the, the leader of the band. And he told the person, where is the mountain that one person? Okay, now. And the man carried his hand up and said, Father, you said in your word that if you have faith. He quoted it. And I said, you mountain, be uprooted and be cast into the sea. As the word was leaving his mouth, there was an earthquake. The mountain was leveled to the ground. The warrior and his army fell on the ground. <laughs> and he went back and made sure that his entire village gave their life to Jesus Christ. That is a wonder. That is a wonder. That is not a miracle. That is not a sign. That is a wonder. He did not heal the sick. He did not raise the dead. He just manifested the greatness of God's power. That is a wonder. It's so sad that in our generation, Christianity has died. We are full of noise. So we, have, we, are, we are comforting ourselves with bottles of oil, salt, candle, all these witchcraft things. There is no genuine power of God. Somebody made a statement. We, we, we could say she is blaspheming, but in, in what she said makes sense. Sometimes I listen to, I watch what bloggers are saying about us preachers. Since the day God spoke to me that they are the threshing floor, I begin to watch them. So there was this blogger I was watching, I think she, she's in Canada, also I don't, I don't know, I think she has even featured <laughs> a video about me one time. So she was raising an issue that happened in Nigeria. And she, she was talking about the death of um, that gospel singer, Osinachi. She was saying that her pastor said that Osinachi was sick in the hospital. He went to pray for her. After, uh, while he was going for a crusade, that when he got to the crusade, cripples walk, blind saw. But his own, that's what the woman was saying, you know, that his own spiritual daughter, who have been serving him still died after his prayer. So the woman now says she's questioning the kind of power of God that that pastor has. That's what she said. Well, we will not feel happy. As, as a pastor, you will not be happy that they are attacking us. <laughs> but it pains me anyway, her statement. But I also went back and started thinking. I said, this is true. And I put myself, I said, God, help me. Let me not, let me, let people under me be experiencing you. Not that we go to Sokoto, go to Dusa place and we're able to make ripples work. Of course, you begin to question what kind of power is I know people who are in the supernatural can tell you they are not in the crusades even for the anointing in the church. Uh -uh, listen, it's not the same Jesus. What did the Bible say? That shall serve the Lord your God. He will bless your bread and bless your water and take sickness away from the midst of you. So we believers should live in divine health while we distribute divine, um, while we, we distribute miracles. We live in divine health while we distribute miracles to the unbeliever. That is God's plan. We may not have achieved it, but that is the plan of God. That's the plan of God. So you begin to see that we in the church today, we don't really have power. Power has disappeared from the body of Christ. So we, we console ourselves with oil, console ourselves with salt, with water, with mantle, with sand. Yes, we, people see miracles, but there are no wonders. Those wonders that our father like commanding, a, like what I just told you, an entire mountain was leveled so that the worship of the one and only true God could be promoted. Now you cannot see why 
A lot of believers are worshipping different gods. Some worship the god of gold. Some worship the god of fortress. All kinds of gods that we are worshipping. Because they are no wonders again. To show us, to demonstrate the one and only true God. Now, the reason why we need to be careful about matters of wonders. Okay, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll get into that. I'm just laying foundation into, into what I want to teach. I've not said what I want to teach anyway. So, you should understand that the primary purpose of wonders is to promote the worship of the one and only true God. That is the purpose of wonders. If we do not understand that, they will not be able to effectively win even our own relatives. Those our die-hard relatives who hate our Jesus, through wonders, they will come to love our Jesus. If God demonstrates one of his wonders in the life of your family, all of them will just repent to. I mean, it's right by your hand. The essence of the wonders of God is to promote the worship of the one and only true God. There can be no worship of the one and only true God where he is vehemently resisted except wonders are demonstrated. Let me share this my Bible and spiritual father. He, there were, he was pastoring a smaller church. I think this happened in the late 70s or early 80s. He was pastoring a smaller church, what he told us. A smaller branch of the Assassin's Creed Church somewhere in the northern part of Nigeria. And there were these mountains where people were living in that part of Nigeria where civilization had not even reached reach them. So as a result, they were feeding on human beings, late 70s. Missionaries have tried to go there. They will kill them and eat them then bury their bones. So God now met him and said he should go. So he spent 40 days and 40 nights in prayer. Not that, I'm not saying he fasted 40 and 40 nights. No, I say he spent. So there was fasting. There was also resting in the process. So at the end of the day, he got up. A young man, not even married then, and he carried his Bible to that place. He said to us that when he was walking, he was walking and praying in the spirit. And he got to that place. Because the village are on the mountain. So as soon as they saw a figure coming, they all came out and started rejoicing that their gods have brought meat again for them. So, because ordinarily they use poisonous arrows. So they now took a poisonous arrow and stretch it towards him. He stood and lifted up the Bible up and was praying the Spirit. And they shoot the arrow. The arrow came straight. Listen, this is not a movie. Yo. The man that this happened to was my, is my spiritual father. I have I have met him. So, okay, of course, your spiritual father must have met him. Stay, stay, we walk together. So, this is not a game. I'm not playing games. I'm telling you what I heard. The arrow hit him here in the chest and fell on the ground. The, he said, when they struck the arrow, that he felt a supernatural being enter him. Of course, Christ in you, the hope of glory. So, Jesus took residence on his inside, manifested immediately. Because if Christ had not manifested, the arrow would kill him. Manifested immediately, and that arrow hit his chest and fell on the ground. They shoot another one, hit it fell. So they were shooting, the arrows were falling. Ah. And the people dropped. They, they started coming down from the mountain. We're talking about the wonders of God. They started coming down from the mountain, and they dropped the arrows. And they knelt down and carried their hand up. They were calling him a deity. They didn't know he was a preacher. They were using in their language. Because, you know, when God sends you on such mission, he gives you understanding. He may not give you the utterance, but he gives you understanding. So they were calling him a deity. They were worshipping him. They were bowing like this. He was stopping them, stopping them, stopping them. Later, 
he used signs to tell that he was going to come back. So he came back home and gathered evangelists. People who understand that language. And they went back to that, to that community. And they witnessed Christ to them. And they planted church in that place. So they now got clothes for them to be wearing and all of that stuff. And they took them away from cannibalism to Christianity. Now, wait a minute. That kind of a mission does not require a powerful preacher. <laughs> does not require Hebrew and Hebrew. You want to sit down and tell them the Greek meaning of this word, <laughs> the way I do here in church, the, the Hebrew meaning, <laughs> they will remove your head while you are telling them Greek meaning and Hebrew meaning. That's <laughs> you, you, you get my point. That kind of place requires the demonstration of the wonders of God. They warned us. It is they that know their God that, shall, that, will do, that will carry out such great exploit. So it takes the demonstration of the wonders of God for the worship of the one and only true God to be promoted. Sadly speaking, when God performs certain wonders, People of his concern are blind to the wonders. So they don't respond. Just as Jesus came, when they demonstrated many wonders. They didn't listen to him. The, the last one that he demonstrated to show that he is God was him resurrecting from the grave. Because no man can die and resurrect himself and come out of the grave. Only God can come out of the grave. Resurrection itself is a wonder. Resurrection. It's a wonder. That is a wonder that authenticates Christianity. Resurrection. So, in case, maybe this teachings, this series will be good for only those who are called to ministry and those uh, Christians who want to be effective Christians, not lazy people who are lying at ease in Zion. You can never win a hardened person except there is wonders. Okay, look at the wonder that happened. Because wonders comes in the format of wonders comes in the format of God's mercy. Like the one of the of the of that happened in Afghanistan, which I share, and the one that happened to my spiritual father. Because ordinarily, if you say touch not my anointed, let's say God have gone to the point of touch not my anointed. Why they shooting the arrow? God will send Michael to kill all of them. But God need their salvation, need them in the kingdom. This is where we should not be praying that God attack our enemy because He want them to be saved. Rather, we should pray that God should protect us from our enemies. The way my spiritual father was protected, and he now got the people saved. That God should protect us from our enemies, not that God should kill them. He should protect us from them. He should paralyze their forces so that they cannot take us out and then reach out and save them. So that wonder was God's mercy on the community. God's mercy, God's wonders comes in the format of his mercy. When they come in the format of his mercy, everything is towards redemption. Redemption of a soul. Now, God's wonders also come in form of God's judgment. <laughs> they come in, in form of God's judgment. Because I remember 2 Kings chapter 2, the 42 boys who mocked Elisha. The Bible says she bear. It was a wonder for animals to just come out of the booth mysteriously and eat 42. There were many of them there were many of them who were, who were saying, Elijah, Elijah. They, but God saw, there were many youths who were coming in a group. You see, in Israel, young men move in group. And I think in my village, it used to happen like that before. I don't know now. So, so they were coming in group. Not every one of the boys mocked Elijah. Elisha. This is 2 Kings chapter 2. Not every one of them mocked him. But 42 of the group mocked him. So when the two Shebias came, it was a wonder that they could, they, they could select the 42 and kill all of them. It's a wonder. So God's wonder come in front of God's mercy, 
God's wonder coming from out of God's judgment. When it comes from out of God's judgment, it is to protect his redemption plan. Write it down if you are writing. If God's wonders, if the wonders of God come in the format of God's mercy, it is to execute the redemption of, of his soul or to execute his redemption plan. If it comes in form of God's judgment, it is to protect God's redemption plan. To protect it. So to, to protect his, his redemption plan, he will kill. To execute his redemption plan, he will make a life. So we, that's what the Bible says. Our God kills and makes a life. Isaiah 45 says he creates calamity and creates peace. The same God. The same God. So when it comes in the format of mercy, it is to execute his redemption plan, which involves the redemption of souls. You get my point? Redemption of souls. Now, if it comes in the format of God's judgment, it is to protect his redemption plan. So as God's mercy, it executes. As God's judgment, it protects his redemption plan. God will kill to make a life. That's the way you operate. Now, these dimensions of God, they are sovereign dimensions. You don't initiate them on your own. They are sovereign. Even the one high Christian who went there, he went there by the arm of the Lord. Because if I tell you all the story, he told him he was coming. It was seven days. He was praying to seek the face of God. God now permitted him and he went. When he got there, the sovereign arm of the Lord took him over completely. The one of my spiritual father, don't go tomorrow and say you want to go and stand for somebody to shoot an arrow. They will kill you. He went there by the sovereign arm of God. By the sovereign arm of God to open up that place. So the wonders of God are product of his sovereignty. The wonders of God are product of his sovereignty. He overrules. He overrides. He suspends. He neutralizes. It is true the wonders of God that God demonstrates to the whole human race that he is the owner of the earth. Do you know that the flood of Noah was, was a wonder of God? No devil can flood the whole earth, no matter how crazy he is. The flood of Noah was the flood of Noah was a wonder of God. The agenda was to protect God, God's redemption plan for mankind. It, because wickedness was everywhere, ruining God's redemption plan. The Bible says even the angels God sent to go and warn them. Ended up sleeping with the women. And everything was scattered. The Bible says every imagination of a man's house was wicked. And God saw that his redemption plan for the human race, that is today in the Garden of Eden, was under intense jeopardy. It was in, in a mode of being eliminated completely. And God now decided to execute judgment, to protect that redemption plan. He sent a worldwide flood. That was a wonder. That was a massive wonder of God. You won't call it a miracle. You won't call it a sign. The flood of Noah was a wonder. Hallelujah. That's why the people did not believe him. When Noah said that rain was going to fall and fill them, they didn't believe. The Bible says the depth of the earth were broken. The water above poured the air on the earth. The one beneath came and the, the whole world that was one land mass splitted into seven continents. It was a wonder of God. And yet in the midst of that, those vibrations that were happening on earth, the ark did not uh, capsize. Is it not one little tsunami that threw away all the ships in the high sea? What happened under Noah was higher than tsunami. And yet the ark that is a wonder of God. That is a wonder of God. Also, when Obededom took the, the ark of God into his house for three months and he blessed him, it was a wonder of God. When, this, when Uzzah touched the ark and Uzzah died, it was still a wonder of God. One was to redeem, was to execute God's redemption plan. The second was to protect God's redemption plan. Hallelujah. So these are the formats that God's wonders happen. 
The primary reason is to promote the worship of the one and only true God. Let's read Psalm 68. Let, you know, we are dwelling on Psalm 68. It said, All the earth shall worship you and sing praises to you. They shall sing praises to your name. Selah. Verse 5. Come and see the works of God. He is awesome or terrible in his doing towards the sons of men. Look, I had the scripture began to list his wonders. He turned the sea into dry land. That was a wonder of God. They went through the river on foot. That was a wonder of God. Dear, we will rejoice in him. Hallelujah. Verse 7 says, He ruled by his power forever. His eyes observe the nations. Do not let the rebellious exalt themselves. Salah. So, it is through the wonders of God that the rebellious are humiliated. Through the wonders of God. So, this end time, actually, if the church is going to save the world, we have to go back to the days of our fathers where they walked in wonders. They walked in wonders and they did a whole lot of stuff. And when, when I look at our generation, I see the wonders of the Antichrist. You don't see the wonders of God. With all the so-called signs that happen in so many of our churches, do you see the one and only true God promoted? So with what I've shared with us, let's not go into the things we must know to walk in the wonders of God. We have listed three things. We say you need God's power. You need to walk in the spirit, not in the flesh, at all times. And you need understanding. Look at what the Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. It says, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all you're getting, get understanding. You know, knowledge is a source of wisdom. And knowledge and wisdom work together to give us understanding. Knowledge is what it is. Wisdom is how to do it. Or how it is. What understanding is comprehending how it is. Knowledge is what it is. Wisdom is how to apply what it is. Understanding is underst how comprehending what it is. That's what it is. Now, you need wisdom. Or let's, you need understanding of what the wonders of God are to work in them. Do you know that to even come to the realm of the greatness of God's power, you need understanding also. To come to the realm of walking in the spirit, you need understanding to walk in the spirit. So where there is no understanding, none of this is possible. That's what the Bible says. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all your getting, in all your, the price you are paying to get everything, you say get understanding. That means, Spend more to get understanding. Why? Because of Psalm 16. Psalm 16. Open your Bible to Psalm 16. Verse 22. Psalm 16, verse 22. It says, Understanding is a wellspring of life to him who has it. I stop there. Understanding is a wellspring of life to him that has it. So when you have understanding, knowledge flows like a river. Men of understanding, when they open their mouth, they fill you with insight into the issues of life. If they are preachers, when they open their mouth, they fill you with insight into matters of the kingdom. They, they flow <coughs> naturally. They don't struggle to say things. Men of understanding. Both in the kingdom of God and outside the kingdom. Men of understanding, they don't, they don't suffer. They don't struggle to say things. Why? Because the understanding they have has become a well. Springing life, if you are in Christ, 
if, if it's the kingdom of God, a word springing life. So when they open their mouth to speak, you catch life. They transmit the life of God in your spirit. Are you understanding me? Many years ago, I was coming up, teenager, 15, 16. I knew I was going to be a preacher. I was asking God, please, make me a man of understanding. I want to be able to tag off my mom for some statements you use on me. You don't know how to teach. You don't know. We went to prayer. So make me a man of understanding. I don't want to struggle to preach. That's so why then I was struggling with stamina. I don't want to struggle to preach. Make me, and the Lord began to show me, here's the pathway. You have to eat the word. You have to study. You have to be like Jeremiah. You have to be like Ezekiel. You know, we begin to chew. We begin to parade through the scriptures until God gave us understanding to, in the scriptures. And it's, it's now become like a well springing life. Springing life. That is how we should be. That is how you should be as a Christian. When you open your mouth, you spring life to your family. Now, we are going to look at, get understanding the matters of wonders. So that it becomes, once we have that understanding, it will be springing up life that is power. Helping us to walk in the spirit, helping us to release power. It will help us to walk in the wonders of God. Because we cannot persuade people to worship the one and only true God with preaching only. No. No, no matter how powerful. I've told you, I've shared with you a few testimonies. You cannot persuade people with preaching alone. <clears throat> Let me tell you something. We went to have a crusade somewhere in late 90s. That place is like the boundary between the Middle Belt and the South South. As of when we went, how I got to know how we went to that place was this. I was in prayer and asking the Lord, what's the next place in the nation where to go with our... Then we were doing crusade in villages, rural crusade. Because we discovered that the anointing was wasting in the city. And villages don't know anything about God. We now say, let's face the village. We'll not be doing, let us not do conference in the city because the anointing is wasting in the city. That was what we told ourselves. So we began to pray. And the Lord now spoke to our, my heart, gave me that name of a village. So I told my team, I was already preparing. So when we went there, the reception was not too good the first time because they were suspicious. How can people come from the city and say they want to hold one? They are not asking us for money. They are the one bringing the money. They said the only one support. No, this is strange. So we started persuading them. So the first meeting was received with resistance. Now, but in that meeting, a miracle, a, a wonder happened. Miracles happen, a lot of things happen, but... The wonder that happened was the prophetic anointing came on me and I saw war coming. I saw killings coming. And I prayed and I said, after everybody heard it, that there, there's going to be killings within the middle belt of Nigeria. Sadly speaking, those things are still happening now. There's going to be killing within the middle belt. But we put a prayer cover and the killing will be because of one, two, three. We put a prayer cover over this place. Lord, no matter what happened, protect these people because they have hosted us. So we left. It wasn't long the thing started. The people told us that whenever the fight want to get to that village, it settles. <laughs> not once, not twice. Whenever you want to get to that village, it just settled. Then me, I did not even understand Psalm 46 that said God cut the, uh, the chariots. He burned the chariots. And I didn't understand that. He made war to cease. I didn't even know that Psalm in my life. As of then, I didn't know the Psalm. He made wars to cease. So because the village is like in the center, so many villages, it is a boundary of many other villages. So this one will come, when it's coming this way, it will stop. Coming this way, it will stop. Do you know what happened? When we now went again for a crusade, the whole village responded. In fact, they gave us a mini stadium to use. Come and see the support. When we were leaving, our vehicles were full of food. What was it that opened them up to the gospel, the wonders of God? Every evangelist that wants to make impact must operate in the wings of God's wonders. Miracles, signs, and wonders must be part of his ministry. Any church that wants to really save men, 
Apart from holding sound doctrine, God must back you with his wonders. I look at the life of John the Baptist. He didn't perform miracle. There was no miracle in his ministry. People who say that it is through miracles that people come to your church. Well, it's not applicable in every case. If you look at John the Baptist, there was no miracle. But the Bible says the entire Israel went to him. What was it that moved them? Signs and wonders. No miracle. What is the sign? Water baptism. What is the wonder? People coming to him without miracles was a wonder. People coming to him without crowd pulling system was a wonder. He did not send hand, he did not send flyer, he did not force anybody. He was in the wilderness and they met him there. It's a wonder. God will use wonder to authenticate your calling if you are called of God. He will use wonders to stabilize your life. Stabilize your marriage, stabilize your finances, stabilize your family. He will use, he, he use God uses wonders to bring stability. Look at the wonder of how uh, Haman in the Bible was pulled, was taken out. He moved against the Jew. And the people did what every, every child of God should learn how to do. Depend on God. They went to God in prayer. Esther was stirred up as she got up. Three days and three nights she was seeking the face of God for help. And look at what happened finally. The very gallop, or let's say the killing machine that Haman prepared for Mordecai. Mordecai was, Haman was the one that was later hung, hung on it. Look at the wonder. The king could not sleep. It was a wonder for the king not to sleep. And the king was ask, asking that we check the records. They began to check records. It's a wonder for a king not to sleep. He sent away all the musicians that come every evening for social. You, you know, if you go to palaces, night is always very busy. But the guy could not sleep. They began to open the record. They now found out that Mordecai helped the king, protected him from assassins. That was a wonder. And her, her man was coming to collect the death sentence of the same Mordecai. It was a wonder. For that to happen, for her man to, to, to for, because her man was planning before that day, for God to make sure that the very period that the king is looking for who to talk to was when Haman, the one who hated Mordecai, was entering the palace. It's a wonder. May God fill your life with wonders in the name of Jesus. May God use wonders to silence your enemies. May God use wonders to shut down the mouth of those that are ruining your life and your destiny. May God use wonders to shut down the mouth of those that are ruining, ruining their life. Anyone, so, anyone surrounded by the messengers of wickedness, by those who are instruments of cruelty, may God unleash his wonders into your life and your family to protect you from the messengers of death in the name of Jesus Christ. May God shield you with his wonders. May God protect your family with his wonders. May God pour his, his wonders into your life. That every part you take in life, you will experience the wonders of God. As you open your business, you will experience the wonder of God. As you face your day, you will experience the wonder of God. In the name of Jesus. And if there's anyone under your influence who is not saved, may God release his wonders in your life to destroy the spirit of hell from their heart and bring them to the place of salvation in the name of Jesus Christ. May wonders become your characteristics in the name of Jesus. It was God's wonder that rescued Mordecai. God's wonder. Because they prayed. So through prayer, righteous prayer and fasting, we can provoke the wonders of God. That's why I say, I'm giving you understanding now. That's understanding you are, you are receiving now. You can provoke the wonders of God through righteous prayer and fasting. Seeking him to help you. God, only you. Look at what David said. I will lift up my eyes upon the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. Who made heaven and earth? That's how to pray. And it's going to bring wonders your way. So, 
It was a wonder Haman was going to recommend for the death of Mordecai. He entered the palace and the king was looking for somebody to talk to him, to advise him on what to do for, for Mordecai. As soon as Haman, before Haman could speak, look at the wonder of God, the king said, hey, my, how are you? My most trusted cabinet minister, super premier cabinet minister. <laughs> what do you think should be done to the man whom the king did, did like to honor? Haman now entered into the delusion. <laughs> Who else if not me? <laughs> if not me. And her man gave a prescription that he wanted for himself. You see, Jesus made a statement. He said, thou shalt love your neighbor as you love yourself. <laughs> Jesus executed that scripture <laughs> in her man's life. <laughs> he, 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 he loved his enemy. <laughs> he didn't know it was his enemy he was talking about. He just loved his neighbor the way he loved himself, upside down. He described what he wanted. And he got the shocker of his life. Exactly what you have said without missing a word. Go and do it to Mordecai. Ah ah. Heart attack started at that point because how can the very person I am coming to collect permission to kill, you're asking me to go and put him on your limousine and drive him the whole nation, put it on CNN, on BBC, so to speak. I'm just trying to tell you what really happened. There was no CNN there. There was no BBC. I'm just telling you. I'm just trying to tell you what really happened. Because it was publicized the whole 127 provinces of that king. Which cover Africa, the whole of Europe, part of um, uh, Asia, the whole of India was under their rule. Massive coverage of land. Everybody in the whole 127 provinces, they knew that Mordecai was riding the king's limousine, if I may use that word. So that means if there was CNN then, they'll put it on CNN. They'll put it on BBC. They'll put it on all the network, on social media. It will be everywhere on earth. Haman now went back home like a chicken that rain has fell upon. When he went, and his wife spoke sense. You know, there's, there's one thing about women. If they're in good mood, <laughs> God speaks to them. If they're in bad mood, the devil speaks to them. That was what happened to Adam in the garden. When a man came back, the same woman that was supporting him, yeah, 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 yeah. When he now had an artist, he said, ah, let me become a prophetess. He Mordecai be the seed of the Jew. <laughs> now that you have started falling, he will fall and fall and fall and fall until there's no place to fall again. <laughs> Paraphrase. In another world, if we carry the seed of Christ in us, God will use his wonders to humiliate our enemies. That's why when God says, fear not. Fear not. When God said, be still, be still. <laughs> Do not begin to shake. Because he is full of wonders. He is full of, he is, he is full of wonders. He has no unleash all his wonders on it. God is full of wonders. Sometimes when you are in need, ask God to send his wonder upon your life. To take care of that need. God is full of wonders. That was how he humbled a man. Instead of a man to go and call Mordecai at that time and say, I'm very sorry. I went to the, go to the king and say, King, I came to confess my sin. That letter, which I say you should sign, actually I hated the Jew. Please withdraw it. But the guy did not do He went on. While he was still there, the liberal, behold, Esther has entered the palace. And they have sent for Haman. Haman have never even rested from the first shocker of God's wonder. <laughs> May you not be a specimen where God will use to show how wonderful he can be. Look at the name of Jesus. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. His government shall be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful. Wonderful. If God wants to demonstrate how wonderful he can be in your life, your enemies are in trouble. Your enemies will be in trouble. If God wants to demonstrate how wonderful he can be in your life. How wonderful he can be. At the end of the day, her man entered into serious trouble. The second wonder, the last wonder that brought him down, after Esther has revealed and said, it is this guy that wants to kill all of us, the king got angry in a rage. Her man knelt down to beg Esther. He, he never wanted to do anything. He wasn't romancing her or whatever. He just knelt down. He humbled himself at the wrong time. <laughs> You better humble yourself at the right time. 
You see, God have timing for things. If you don't humble yourself at the right time, it will be mis misread, and that, will be, and, and that will be the end of your life. Her man humbled himself at the wrong time. He's supposed to humble himself after the wonder of Mordecai has slapped him. That was not supposed to humble himself. But he humbled himself at the, at the wrong time. When the king's wrath, when people have provoked God to the point of God has risen like a lion to protect us, and they go and start praying and fast, it's not going to work. Because it's the wrong time to humble yourself, my friend. God have, because that is not repentance. You, are, you have not repented. You're only feeling remorseful because you have seen the consequence of your action coming. The guy, the guy was trying to beg Mordecai and God released another wonder. God is a poster of wonder. He posts them like this. He posts them like this. When God wants to deal with your enemy, forget it. He will just be posting his wonders to them like this. One after the other. You see the way he did to Pharaoh? He posted number one. Pharaoh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He posted only one. Snake. What's the name of um, Moses' rod became a snake. And Pharaoh said, so what nonsense? Bring the magician, the brown magician. And they also threw. Moses were the one that taught you these games. But the difference between their game and God's game is the rod of Moses swallowed their own rod. Instead of Pharaoh to humble himself, I will not let you go. God posted another one there. I will not let you go. God posted another one. He manifested himself in Egypt as wonderful. Wonderful. So he posted number one, number two, number three, number four. Pharaoh was still messing up. He posted till he got to number nine. And he told Moses, the number ten that is coming, ten is the number of harvest. So I am bringing number ten. Sorry, nine is the number of harvest. After harvest, you move. I am bringing number ten. This one, his backbone will be broken. Because I will execute judgment on the gods of Egypt. Now prepare yourself. And they prepared themselves. And God posted number 10. And the gods of Egypt were smashed. The firstborn died. That was a wonder of God. That was a major wonder of God. And they moved out. The Bible said the army of God came out of Egypt. There was no one feeble among them. That's also a wonder of God. For them to be fed with, with manna for 40 years is a wonder of God. For the Red Sea to part is a wonder of God. Are you understanding me? You see, may God fill your life with his wonders. May God shield you with his wonders. May God satisfy you early with his wonders. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for every one of you who have keyed into the covenant of sustenance. May the wonder of God pursue and overtake you. May God manifest because you have joined me to sustain this work. You have joined me to sustain this work. May the wonder of God shield you. May the wonder of God protect you. May the wonder of God fight for you. May God post his wonders to your life to sustain you in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to advise you not to miss the Wednesday service. It's going to be awesome. If you have not joined the covenant, please join because I'm already feeling the river flowing. <laughs> you get my point? I'm already feeling the river flowing. We prophesy through normal discussion, not by rolling on the ground like winches, like we would have epilepsy. You get my point? Listen carefully. Something's happening in the realm of the spirit. If you have not joined this covenant of sustainers, quickly join. I will speak more about it at the end. So quickly join because God is going to post wonders to everybody who participate in the covenant. He will post wonders because we are reaching the world, reaching the planet. So he will post his wonders. He will post his wonders to your life. He will post it in response to your sacrifice. Especially those of you that join me in the hundredfold, the one I say hundred thousand, which I say a thousand dollars, hundredfold, hundred thousand shilling, one thousand dollars. God will post his wonders to you in a hundredfold. And those who are in 50, 30, uh, 20, 10, and 5. Each, the Bible says, he that so sparingly will respond. He that so bountifully will reap bountifully. May God respond to your seed, your sacrifice. May God respond to your giving, your obedience with his wonders in the name of Jesus Christ. As he keep using this channel, this station, to do wonders in the lives of people, may your life not lack wonders. May your destiny not lack wonders. May your family not lack the wonders of God. 
as you have obeyed the Lord, may heaven empty itself upon your life with the wonders of God in the name of Jesus. Whenever you are overwhelmed and there's no one to help you, may God send his wonders your way. May God send his wonders your way. May God send his wonders your way to help you in the day of adversity. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is going to satisfy us with his wonders. He's going to sustain. It takes wonders to sustain sustainers. The widow of Zarephath was a sustainer. God used the wonder of making sure that his food did not run dry for three and a half years to sustain him. So wonders are posted to the lives of sustainers. Wonders. People who sustain the purposes of God, God posts his wonders to their lives. He puts his wonders to their lives to silence their enemy, to make things work that are not working. The essence is to promote the worship of the one and only true God. Because the essence of who we put in this money is to, is, to, is to promote the worship of the one and only true God by the preaching of the gospel. So now that we have put our money together to promote it by the preaching of the gospel, God will release his wonders in our life to promote it by the demonstration of his beauty in our destinies, in the name of Jesus Christ. So have in the back of your mind that this week is a week of miracle for you, a week of prophetic insurance for everybody who is part of the covenant of sustainers. Let me go back to the teaching. Time is really going. Now we have said that you need understanding and we have given a whole lot of understanding. Let's go to some definitions. What is a wonder? There are four basic parts of speech. One of it is called a noun. Those of you who did English language you understand. We have nouns, we have verbs. Now, the word wonder as a noun is what I'm talking about. Because the word wonder can also be used as a verb. A verb is a word that describes the action of a thing. Why a noun is the name of a place, animal, or thing. That is very simple. You know that that is the things you were taught in the primary school. Now, generally, what is a wonder? Write this down. Secularly, this is not, I am, I am trying to make it as simple as possible. I've not gone into the Greek meaning, the Hebrew meaning, the Aramaic meaning. No. I want to make it very simple. What is a wonder? Generally, Maybe if God, maybe tomorrow we're going to grip me now all of that stuff. But this is it. A wonder is a feeling of amazement. A wonder is a feeling of amazement and admiration caused by something beautiful, remarkable, or unfamiliar. A wonder is a feel, feeling of amazement and admiration. Caused by something beautiful, remarkable, or unfamiliar. I write that on the board. I've told you the two formats that one that's come in. They come in the format of God's mercy, and they come in the format of God's judgment. Let me write that here. As God's mercy, they execute his redemptive plan. As God's judgment, as God's judgment, they protect his redemptive plan. God can use wonders to protect a church. <laughs> he can use wonders. I remember the ministry of the late Archbishop B.A. Dawsa was, was established in Benin through wonders. A lot of wonders. People dying without waking up because they, they wanted him dead. The occult dying like chicken because they moved against him. Those are wonders. Those are wonders. When God begins to kill our enemies physically, it's wonders. People that <laughs> people that say they want to approve to God will prove them. Why they are planning it, they develop cancer and die. That is a wonder. 
You see, God is terrible. Though. That's why we should not stand on his way. He's very loving. But when it comes to protecting his redemptive plan, it can be very terrible. He will release a wonder on your head. <laughs> Are you understanding me? That's why make friend with God, make friend. Make friend with God, make friend. If you not make friend with God, shame go be your own. Make friend with God, make friend. Because the Bible says, kiss the son, lest he be angry with you. Make friend with God. <laughs> Don't be on the wrong side of God. Be on the right side. Sit at his right hand, not on his head. Be with him. That's how David, Moses came from the mountain and he asked, who is on the Lord's side? Be on the Lord's side so that his wonders will be coming to you as his mercy, not judgment. Because when you become a threat to his redemption plan, he executes judgment on you. When anybody on earth becomes a threat to God's redemption plan, God executes judgment on them. By releasing a wonder on their head. So, when we, that wonder in, in terms of events, because tomorrow you will, I will when I'm, maybe tomorrow, or maybe, okay, maybe let me mention it today. This general definition of wonder, we are seeing it as a feeling. There's also wonder as an event. And by tomorrow, we're going to see wonder as a person. <laughs> Do you understand? Today, we are seeing it as a feeling. The one <laughs> that God used to execute judgment, sometimes he uses events, sometimes he uses people to be punishment for people. For instance, the Bible is very clear that when people are not interested in truth, God, give, God allow them to have crafty pastors and false prophets as their papas and their mamas. God will place the range preachers over those who hate him. The, that's how when you see people under a preacher, you know this one, this one is, is, is a madman. When you place him side by side the scripture, you know this is a madman. A, major, a multitude are following him. Those multitudes are being punished for not loving the truth. It's an act of judgment. Certain preachers today are judgment for their members. Because those members are we people who refuse to walk with God in truth. God now posts them to dangerous preachers to be their pastors. Is there in the Bible? God told Israel, I will give you bad leaders as judgment. Today we are the Israelites. Bad leaders as judgment. So why are there so many false prophets today? It's because we have false Christians everywhere. People that are not interested in God. God now allowed the false prophet to arise. To like be passed. So what God is doing is now removing those who are interested in him away from false churches and gathering them into, into their spiritual family. And that, there are people that no matter what to talk, they will not stop following the mad prophets. Because the mad prophet has judgment to them. It's the day they encounter the truth, the mercy of God. When God says, okay, today I've, 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 I've had mercy on you, that's when they will stop following those prophets. So there's, an, there's a wonder as a feeling. There's wonder as event. There's wonder as a person. That's what we're going to see today, tomorrow, God willing, then Thursday. Because Wednesday, next tomorrow, we'll be having the in-house session. And for those of you who were part of the covenant, wherever you are in the world, all I need is just your email. I'm going to post, send to you the link so that you join us online. For, because it's going to be secluded link. It's not going to be publicly on social media where no we'll send the link to you only you can join it you get my point so you just send us your send it to my email your your how do we call it your youtube address so that we forward the link to you and you subscribe i want to start forwarding the link maybe tomorrow or so so if you can even get in touch me to me on my phone then i send the link to you of the special uh, channel I have opened for that, you just subscribe because it's going to broadcast only to the subscribers. And when you are sending your mail, also send the proof that you have you are part of the covenant. Uh -huh. Because it's only for covenant 
and those of other part of it. So as a feeling, a wonder is a feeling of amazement and admiration caused by something beautiful, remarkable, or unfamiliar. I hope you've gotten it. A wonder is a feeling of amazement and admiration caused by something beautiful, remarkable, or unfamiliar. Now, add this to this. A wonder can be produced by the spirit of Antichrist or the spirit of Christ. A wonder can be produced either by the spirit of Christ or the spirit of the Antichrist. In fact, the Bible warns us that one way the Antichrist will use to introduce himself this end time is through wonders, signs and wonders. He's going to speak in signs and wonders, the Antichrist. Serious wonders. Look at the first prophet powered by the Antichrist. They move in serious wonders that will leave anyone who does, who does not have Christ established in their heart wondering if, if this cannot be God. This is God. That's what they'll be saying. So a wonder can be produced either by the spirit of Christ or the spirit of the Antichrist. So when the spirit of the Antichrist produces a wonder, what does it do to people? It impress them with surprises. It astonishes them. So you see that in the book of Acts chapter 8, where the Sotra produced wonders for a long time. And look at the result. Go to Acts chapter 8. So you can tell between a wonder that is produced by God and a wonder that is produced by the Antichrist. A wonder produced by the Spirit of Christ and a wonder produced by the Spirit of the Antichrist. So the Bible says in verse 9, but there was a certain man called Simon who previously practiced sorcery in the city and astonished the people of Samaria, claiming that he was someone great. What did he astonish them with? With his wonders. This is the spirit of the Antichrist. When he manifests as the demon of deliverance, look at the way it manifests. To whom they all gave heed, from the least to the greatest. Why? They saw the wonders. So what was the fruit of this wonder? Look at the next statement. This man is the great power of God. Okay. Every first preacher, every first prophet, that is the way their members address them. Check any preacher on earth that the members are calling the great power of God. Out of every 10, 9.5 are sorcerers. Go and check. When you see a church where members exalt a preacher as a powerful man of God, powerful more than Jesus even, <laughs> the mightiest prophet, the mightiest apostle, the mightiest. Now, they say this is the mightiest. Mightiest evangelist, mightiest power broker, commander of God, major of God's army, general. Look at the words they used to describe them. Major this, major that. Those are great powers. Why are people calling them that? that? Because they are full of wonders. Some, when they realize that people are leaving them, they fake the wonders. People can be paid to pretend to be crippled. And the story of somebody who planned with a man to pretend that he has died, the man died finally. Because what happened? Their craftiness killed them. They put the man in a coffin, gave him certain injection, which will keep him only for a while, motionless for a while. He was supposed to wake up after that. But the prophet who paid the man and his wife to do that and got an ambulance and a coffin and put them inside, put the, put the man inside the coffin, and ask the woman to sit beside the coffin and be crying that her husband has died. 
The prophet wasted so much time. He was, <laughs> well, let me not use the word wasted. God punished him. God wanted to expose deception. He was displaying. The Lord told me that he's going to raise the dead. The Lord told me. You see, be careful of people who always prophesy. Because most of them will prophesy and they go to perform their prophecies. There are pastors I know personally who release a prophecy about someone's death and send people to go and kill the person to fulfill the prophecy. The people they sent expose them. So be careful when, when you see a preacher want to show that God called him by telling you how much of his prophecies are coming to pass. Carry your Bible and leave that church. Because the spirit you people are dealing with is not of Christ. I repeat, when you see a prophet, his ministry is built around how his prophecies came to pass. Please, carry your Bible and leave that place. You people are not dealing with the spirit of Christ. They are trying to manifest wonders to make you call them great power of God. That's how those who share experiences that they had with Moses, had with Abraham, had with... Do you know what they are looking for? They're looking for followership. Not disciples of Christ, but followership of themselves. They want to use Jesus to build a followership around themselves. But the mandate of God to us is clear. Make disciples of all nations. People should be followers of Christ, not followers of preachers. So look at what the Bible says here. They call, they say this man is the great power of God. That means they saw him as the only powerful man of God in existence, which is very dangerous. Look at the next statement. And they heeded him. Why? Because he has astonished them, which is a sorcery for a long time. Now, they never knew. He didn't come and say, I'm a sorcerer. He didn't come and say, I'm using sorcery. No, he came and demonstrated wonders. One of the wonders, the last wonder that killed this man from, from the history I read, Simon the Sorcerer. Look at what he was doing. When, wherever uh, Peter wants to go and hold a meeting, let's say Peter is coming to Nairobi to hold a meeting. Simon the Sorcerer will also come to Nairobi. So this guy kept fooling Peter side by side to like, to like neutralize what Peter was doing. So there was this day Peter was to go to this city. Some of the went ahead of him. So his people, people gathered around him and he was demonstrating. He was walking in the air. Those are the wonders. He projected himself with the power of the wicked one and he went up into the sky as if he was ascending to heaven. And he stood there and was talking to the people down. They were hailing him. Hey, 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 everybody. Hey, hey. And Peter came like this and looked at him. And I say, now, I command you in the name of Jesus to fall. The guy fell and died. <laughs> so the wonder of Peter superseded their own wonders. That's the way the man was killed. A man who could project himself into the air, you should know how powerful he was. No wonder they called him great power of God. He did a lot of wonders. Can I tell you something? There is no false prophet who has really met the devil that will not do wonders. And they know what to do. They know how to make it look like God to your side. So if you look at this, the prophet was at the center of it. So a wonder produced by the Antichrist will have a man at the center. The man will be the object of worship. He is the papa. Nobody else talk. He is the one that you must lie down on. before You, you don't stand while talking to him. You must lie down. You, must, you don't appear before him empty handed. A whole lot of stuff. They will wear some simple clothes because you think that they are simple. They are not, they are very complicated. <laughs> are you understanding me? Listen. The wonder of Simon the sorcerer made him the object of worship. The wonder of God will promote the worship of the one and only true God. The wonder of God. It promotes the worship of the one and only true God. It promotes the worship of the one and only true God. But the wonder of sorcerers promote the worship of the sorcerers. When you see any wonder promoting the worship of the pastor, 
Worship is different from honor. When you honor somebody, you don't worship the person. And when you are worshiping somebody, you are not honoring the person. You are destroying the person. Because God said, my glory I will not share with another. You are bringing a person to judgment. Now listen carefully. It promoted the worship of the sorcerer. That's what the Bible said. They call him great power of God. Nobody knew Jesus though, by his hands. And yet they call him great power of God. Any God who does not introduce Jesus to you is a false God. Because there is no name given among men whereby we may be saved inside the name, the name Jesus Christ. So any God that is not making Jesus the center of your life is not the true God. So, they called him great power of God, and yet they never knew the Lord. So, the wonders of the Antichrist will put God on your lips and remove Christ from your heart. Write it quickly. The wonders of the Antichrist may put God on your lips. It may put God on your lips. But it's going to remove Christ from your heart because it is presented as God. Remember, Satan want to be God. It has been his vision to be like God. So the wonders of the weak of the devil, the wonders of the Antichrist, will put the God on your lips, but remove Christ from your heart. Will put the name of God on your lips. You'll be talking God, God, God say, God say, God, the man is a man of God, is a man of God, 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 God. But there's no Christ in your heart. You cannot be a temple for God in the spirit. But look at the wonders of the spirit of Christ. Look at it. Go to John chapter 11. The wonders produced by Christ himself. John chapter 11, verse 32. Then when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet saying to him, Lord, if you have been here, my brother would not have died. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And he said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. I've told you before that Jesus did not weep because he was helpless. He wept because man was not supposed to die. He groaned for immortality. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. And some of them said, could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? That's the way carnal Christians talk. You don't know what's on ground. Look at verse 38. Then Jesus again groaning himself came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone laid against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of whom who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there's a stench, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not say to you that if you would believe, you will see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you always hear me. But because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. Now when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, comfort. <laughs> Somebody in the grave. And he who had died came out bound, hand and foot with grave clothes. And his face was wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, lose him. And let him go. Then many of the Jews who, are, who, had, who had come to Mary and had seen these things, the thing Jesus did, believed in him. Are the wonders making people to experience salvation by encounter? I'm not talking about salvation by recitation of sinner's prayer. No. Are they encountering the Lord personally? Are the wonders making them experience the resurrected Jesus? If the answer is no, you guys are under the wonders produced by the spirit of the Antichrist. 
Sadly speaking, we can give you names of preachers on this planet Earth whose ministries are wonders produced by the spirit of the Antichrist. But if you have the spirit of Christ in you, you even know them. We don't even need to mention their name. You know them. Scattered across Africa especially. Producing wonders by the spirit of the Antichrist. Making themselves the center of worship. The picture is on this bottle of oil. The picture is in this t-shirt. picture is on the wall here. picture is here. Where there's no picture, his name is Papa, Papa, Papa. When you, when, you, when you hear it, you even feel more afraid than when you're standing before God. Now, do not forget, my time, that one of the major things we're going to face in this generation are wonders coming out of the fountain of the Antichrist. To do one thing, to neutralize the worship of the one and only true God. The wonders of the Antichrist is to resist the worship of the one and only true God. Is to take men away from him. Now, do you know why Baal succeeded in, Egypt, in, uh, in, in Israel? <laughs> Jezebel was married. She was the daughter of Et Baal. In another word, she was the princess of that kingdom, the kingdom of Baal. So when she, was, when she married into the palace of the king, where the seed of Christ was, she established her dominion over the whole of Israel and produced wonders. Before you see prophets of God resigning and joining her prophetic ministry, they saw wonders. She gave them rain. She made their crops to grow. If you don't read history, you understand the power of those scriptures. She made their crops to grow. Before you see Ahab listening to her, Ahab saw wonders in the palace. Jezebel would stand like this. She would do her hand like this. A cop, a cop would leave, would leave her room. She would sit on the throne. She wants to drink water. She, don't, she won't send anybody. She would just do like this. Cop will leave the chef and come and meet her. And she will carry water without touching the jug. Pour water inside and drink. And Ahab saw it like this. And then, ha. That was how everybody. They began to call her. She became very powerful. Listen carefully. Israel accepted Baal because Baal solved their earthly problem. The wonders of the Antichrist is to solve your earthly problems so that you become blind to your eternal problems. I repeat, the wonders of the Antichrist, you can put it on Facebook. This is a very good statement to put on Facebook. Those of you who want to put, I've told you before, <laughs> <laughs> Don't go and put nonsense. The wonders of the Antichrist. <laughs> will solve, will meet the earthly needs of people. The wonders of the Antichrist will meet the earthly needs of people. In order to blindfold them, not to recognize their eternal needs. Or not to recognize their spiritual, their, the problem, of, the sickness of their souls. So the wonders is to meet their earthly needs, so that they will become careless about their eternal needs. That's why you see, once the person get the miracle, he stop coming. He just walk away. He just begin to live anyhow. The prophet have to threaten the person to come back to church. That's the way they operate. That that is why the essence of the wonder is to resist. The worship of, of the one and only true God is to present another God to the beneficiary of the wonder as the true God. I repeat, it is to present another God to the beneficiary of the wonder as the true God. So every wonder from the spirit of the Antichrist will never allow you to worship the one and only true God. And Jesus Christ, whom he sent. If you look at the wonders of God, Lazarus out of the grave, they believe in Jesus. 
if you look at the wonders of the sorcerer, they believe in the sorcerer. So if that wonder is making you to believe in the man of God, instead of believing in Christ, then you are in trouble. You guys are benefiting from the Antichrist. That is why in our dispensation, God would prefer giving us a word than a wonder. I will show you shortly. In our dispensation, God would prefer giving us a word than a wonder. Oh, yes. In previous dispensation, he, he majored on wonders because the Holy Spirit have not been given. People were too blind, so they ought to receive. But in our dispensation, you prefer giving us a word than a wonder. He could send a wonder in a place where they, don't, where they will not listen to the word in order to make them listen to the word. Like I told you what happened to my spiritual father. He went there, God performed his wonders, and the people now were ready for the word. He now came and carried his church members, and they went there and preached to the people. So a wonder to a lost soul it's just like a sign or miracle. It's to get their attention so they can hear the word. But for certain situations, especially in our dispensation, certain situations, God would prefer giving us word than wonders because he knows wonders either from him or from wherever do not really guarantee that the heart of somebody have changed. In most cases, it could make you believe in Christ, but, will, but for Christ to be formed in you, you have to go further than that. The word. I have come to realize that the easiest way to celebrate the wonders of God today, go for the word. Because God will always confirm his word with signs and wonders. So in our dispensation, God will send his word to us, then confirm it with signs and wonders. He will not send signs and wonders to you, then confirm it with his word. <laughs> he will send his word to us, confirm it with his That is how to protect us from the Antichrist, from deception, from false doctrine. I'm closing, give me your attention. He will protect us from deception, Protect us from false doctrine. Protect us from the works of the Antichrist. So he will send word to us. Then confirm that word with signs and wonders in our life. I prefer lay hold on his word. So that you'll be confirming his word in my life with signs and wonders. Than pursuing for his wonders without laying hold on his word. Because when you pursue his wonders without laying hold on his word. You could end up with the Antichrist or... He may give you his wonders, but he will not commit himself to you. Jesus will only commit himself to people who are looking for sound doctrine. Word seekers who are looking for his word. Sound doctrine. A word that he can confirm with signs and wonders. That is why today, if you build your life around the word of the Lord, your life will never lack signs and wonders because there will always be something in your life for God to confirm with signs and wonders. Build your life around the word of God. Build your life around the will of God. Build your life around the purpose of God for your life. Do not listen to the noise around you. Just build your life around the purpose of God for your life. He's going to conf he will find something to confirm with signs and wonders. Let me show you something. Then we pray. John chapter 2. John chapter 2. Verse 23. The Bible says, Now when he was in Jerusalem, <laughs> when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover 
during the feast, many believed in his name when they saw the signs which he did. They were amazed at those signs. I told you a sign can be a wonder. Verse 24, but Jesus did not commit himself to them <laughs> because he knew all men. And he had no need that anyone should testify of man for he knew what was in man. He did not commit himself. Let me take you to another scripture that explains this one properly. Go to the book of John chapter 6. He did not commit himself. Oh. They have experienced wonders, but they were not interested in the word. Second, the Thessalonians tell, uh, tell, tell us, if you are not interested in truth, but you are interested in wonders, God will send you strange, strong delusions. God will be the one to really, the Bible says strong delusion to those who do not, devote, who do not love the truth. You see, be a Christian who love the truth because God will always confirm his word with signs and wonders. Look for what God will confirm with signs and wonders and follow it and pursue it. Don't pursue signs and wonders. If you pursue signs and wonders this day, you will end up in the pocket of the Antichrist. Pursue the word. Look for preachers who have the word. Sound doctrine. And build your life around sound doctrine. You and watch God confirming that sound doctrine with amazing wonders in your life. That's how to work in wonders. I hope you have gotten the understanding. Remember, I said we are giving understanding. So look at John chapter C. It gave us another scenario of things for us to understand why Jesus did not commit himself to these people. John 6 verse 1, after these things, Jesus won, went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of uh, Tiberias. Then a great multitude followed him because they saw his signs, which he performed on those who were diseased. And Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. You know, Jesus most times was not standing to preach the way me I'm standing. He sits down. So maybe I will start sitting down. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's a joke. Now, <laughs> the Passover, because do you know where we pastors took standing up from? I will show you, it's in the Bible. <laughs> the season you stand, the season you sit, is in the Bible, I'll show you in the days to come. Now, the Passover, a feast of the Jews was near. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes and seeing a great multitude coming towards him, he said to Philip, where shall we, where shall we buy bread that this may eat? But this, but this he said to test them, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may have a little. One of the disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there's a lad here who has five belly loaves and two small fishes, but what are there among so many? Then Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number about 5,000. They didn't count women. They didn't count children. They counted only men. That tells you that there should be more than 12,000 people. In fact, I met a Bible scholar who said there were 25,000 because he, he did calculation. He said, let's assume one man have one wife, four children, <coughs> some, you know, and you calculate everything. So some, some say it was 25,000 people. Some say 20, some say 15, based on that calculation. But obviously it was more than 5,000. Because they counted only men. The Bible says, And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to his disciples, and the disciples to those sitting down, and likewise the fish as much as they wanted. So when they were filled, he said to his disciples, Get out of the fragments that remain, so that nothing is lost. This is called wonder. This is a wonder. Therefore, they gathered them up and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five belly loaves, which were left over by those who had eaten it. In the days to come, we'll look at the mystery behind the twelve basket, behind the two fishes, behind the five loaves of bread, and behind the gathering. We'll look at it in the days to come. Then those men whom had seen the signs, listen to this, that Jesus did, said, this truly, this is truly the prophet who is to come into the world. Now here's the problem. Jesus was not a prophet. He was more than a prophet. All the miracles he was doing was for them to 
catch the revelation of his deity. But they could not. So calling him a prophet, you are still wrong. Now here's the point. Let me tell you why God don't really trust wonders to change people up every time. That's how you see he drops them. He drops them. You get my point? Why God will not send wonder ahead? It's right for us believers. If first of all send his word before his wonders. It's because you guarantee the performance of his wonders in your life if you build your life around his word, around his will, and around his ways. That apart. But look at these guys. For the days they sat with the Lord, I don't think they heard what he was saying. Or they accepted it. Look at it. They got the miracle. And they said, this is the great prophet that was to come into the world. In their mind, there's a Messiah coming, which is coming to be king and conquer the Roman government and deliver them from the Roman slavery. So when Jesus now fed them, they now fed out, oh, this is the prophet. He did not commit himself to them. God will not commit himself to you if you don't run after his word. If you want the wonders of God to break forth in your life, stay around things in his kingdom that God confirm with signs and wonders. And when we come back tomorrow, that is where I will start from. So let me just write it here in the board. Things in God's kingdom that are confirmed with signs and wonders. Tomorrow, we'll see them. I've mentioned some today. We'll see them tomorrow. What are those things? Those are the things that will make you a, 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 a wonder as a person. They will make you a wonder as a person and they will create wonders, events around you apart from the feelings in the hearts of people that will make them turn to the one and only true God. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for the message that you have given us tonight. You have spoken to our hearts as a heavenly father, as they heavenly father. Thank you. Thank you for the word seed that you have planted in us. We pray that it will grow fruit. It will grow and bear fruit and bring us to the place of celebrating your wonder, that you manifest yourself in our lives as wonderful in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray that your Holy Spirit will do a work using the ingredients, the truth we have learned tonight. Your Holy Spirit will establish us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I want to talk to you about, remind you again about the covenant of sustainers. We are gathering those resources to pay for our bill for this month. So I'm encouraging you to join us in that covenant with a hundred thousand, the hundredfold. I wish I can have more people in hundredfold. So that we all reap the blessing for the hundredfold, which is equivalent to a thousand dollars. We also want to ask you to look into what God is speaking to you about your commitment. If you cannot stretch and join us in the hundredfold, then you can join in category B, which has lesser figures, 50,000, which will also end you because if you if you stretch and sacrifice, is the pain that is left that God blesses. The pain that is left. So to some people, 5,000 will actually leave a pain behind. To some 10,000, to some 20, 30, and 50. The pain will leave behind. So any of those figures that you have decided to give, if you are giving them a Kenyan shilling, 
you use the pay bill number 950 400 and send it there when you send it you forward your message to me by Wednesday next tomorrow we're going to have the session at the Apostolic Center of the Crowd of Spirit, Kenroyd Complex here in Nairobi. We'll stream it live to strictly those who are afar off, who are part of the covenant. We're going to just send to me your, how do we call it? Send to me your, your YouTube name then we'll use that to send the link to you. Send it to my phone or as an email. Then we'll send the link to you for you to subscribe. Subscription will start maybe from tomorrow. Then transmission will be on Wednesday. So we'll only transmit to those who have subscribed to that YouTube channel. It's a special one only for those who have who subscribed. Because we're going to set it on, to broadcast only to those who subscribe to it. That's all we're going to do. So thank you for being part of this tonight. Let's just give our offering as we normally do. If you have something special to thank God for tonight, to appreciate him for his word. For his word. The pay bill for your the offering or tithe you want to give right now is on the screen. So let's just worship God with our substance. You are God from beginning to the end. There is no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. You are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. You are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. Let me pray for us. Father, thank you for the mercy you have given us to worship with our substance, with our tithes, with our offerings. Tonight we pray, O oh God, that the rain of your presence will fall upon our lives more and more and gather every financial resources we need to clear our personal bills, to come out of debt, to come out of any financial situation. In the name of Jesus, I pray for the jobless, that you give them jobs. I pray for financial favors to be upon those that may be toiling to the glory of your name. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for ministering to us tonight. Thank you for the wonders you have already released into our lives. I pray that it finds, they find a resting place in our lives, O oh God, and seeks in every part of our destinies. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you for being part of this tonight. Don't forget again, Make up your mind to join the covenant of sustainers with that figure so that we pay for this month. Then we see if we can, so that by Wednesday we meet, where we'll be ministered to. And um, we're meeting, the meeting starts 5 p.m. on Wednesday. Tomorrow I'll we'll talk about it again. But I feel in my spirit that God has given us a, a heavy truth tonight on wonders. We have things to go and chew. Tomorrow, when I come back from by 8.30 p.m., we will have the part two or day 14 of the school. Then we skip Wednesday because of the administration in church. Then Thursday we continue. 
with day 15 because this teaching will try and finish it up. Until then, stay strong and do not forget that Jesus is coming soon. Amen.